to make just a, a very uh, giant amount of anode, cathode, lithium, lithium hydroxide, lithium, lithium carbonate. It, it, there's, it's really the refining capacity that is uh, the, the, the biggest choke point. Um, yeah, so that's, that's why we're building a lithium refinery in Corpus Christi. What's up, Skywatchers? What is up indeed? Friday, November 1st, 2024. Every time we see a major disaster, or we hear about lithium mines, smart cities, 15-minute prisons, some might say that our society is already approaching a dystopian future. And I say the future is now. This is the Great Reset. The agenda for the 21st century the Pact for the Future and Agenda 2030 have already altered our world and it will only continue to get worse. The United States government in 2015 signed a declaration on the implementation of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. What does this mean for you and I? Well, the last four years, we've seen our country shut down, travel restricted, people too afraid to leave their homes, Mom and pop stores closed down, major banks closing, and many stores have closed. Trillions of dollars are leaving our country. We have open borders and we have seen medical tyranny. This is a comprehensive plan of action that has taken place around the world, nationally and locally by organizations of the United Nations systems, governments, major corporations, and groups in every area. The Pact for the Future was agreed to by 193 nations and they'll focus on climate engineering, artificial intelligence, war, and our ability to control our own lives. The goal for Agenda 2050 is zero carbon and ironically, we are the carbon-based life forms. So what can we do about this? Well, we can spread awareness, we can start at a local level the more people that are aware, the more action that can be taken. No matter what happens, we can say we tried to stop our world from becoming a dystopian wasteland. All right, I have a couple clips here for us to watch of airplanes and helicopters using LiDAR to map the land and airborne electromagnetic surveying tools to find mineral deposits. And it's my opinion that all of this is connected from the disasters, the floods, the fires, the chemical spills, the train derailments, and eminent domain. So let's take a look. It's a plane flying low over people's homes, scanning the ground with that green laser. It's not something you see every day. Oh geez, it was, uh, I mean, it went back and forth. At least, I would say 40 minutes to an hour. But for people living in Cape Coral, they've been seeing it a lot this week. It was really late at night. It was kind of around midnight. It was around midnight. Um, and I, was, I was actually in my car. I was just getting home, and I saw it going back and forth with a laser beam. And it was it scanned over me multiple times, and it was just moving. It was scanning the whole area, every square footage, basically going just forth. That low flying plane was in Casey Sutton's neighborhood for hours Sunday night. When it came by. You can see the green laser light like spread out, like it was mapping. We heard somebody was mapping the area, is what we were told. And it kept going in a north and south yeah, direction. Right when you put the information Casey provided into the FAA website, it comes back with this information saying it's registered to Randigo LLC. But it's unclear yeah, who or right what they're doing. We just want to know what's going on. Why are we being, why are we being scanned? If you happen to see green lasers in the sky, not to worry. It's the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers conducting coastal surveys. And they're being done using a contracted aircraft equipped with a light detection and ranging system. The lasers are used to measure distance. 
Residents near Oahu South facing shores between Barbers Point and Diamond Head might see those broad beams of green light across the night sky. It'll happen between midnight and 5 a.m. from Friday, April the 28th through the 30th. Officials say brief exposure to the light is not harmful to the unprotected eye. New geoscience information, tools and methods are required to unlock Australia's hidden resource wealth. Geoscience Australia carries out a number of geophysical surveys to investigate where resources are hosted underground. One technique used to identify mineral and groundwater resources is airborne electromagnetic or AEM surveys. Through the Exploring for the Future program, Geoscience Australia completed the world's largest AEM survey in the Northern Territory and Queensland. The data is analysed into a 3D environment to better understand the geology of the survey area. When integrated with other data sets, it can reveal the location of potential mineral formations and map groundwater resources that can support communities, industries and the environment. The results show conductive units that could indicate the presence of mineral deposits, such as nickel and other commodities. It's called lithium, the lightest solid element on that chart most of us only periodically remember from high school chemistry. Benson works for Lithium Americas, a mining company that owns the rights to Thacker Pass, the largest known lithium deposit in the United States. The company expects to potentially extract 80,000 tons of lithium a year. That's enough to power about a million vehicles. The United States has just one lithium producing mine in Southern Nevada, providing less than 2% of world supply. Is it an option for the U.S. not to be in this field and to let other countries supply this? And I think the answer is no. We have a lot of competitors in the world that if we don't do something about it, others are going to be happy to. And one of those countries is China? Yes. How far behind are we? Years. Lithium is now so valuable, it's called white gold. There's believed to be billions of dollars worth of it here at Thacker Pass alone. And while it may be essential to a greener future, getting it out of the ground comes with its own environmental cost. The claim that this would be a green mine is extremely dangerous. Max Wilbert is part of a group of protesters yeah, this is our camp, uh, who have been camping here. out on the Thacker Pass mine site since January. He says lithium is not the silver bullet many believe it to be because of the impact of mining on the land and the large amounts of wastewater created by lithium extraction. In upcoming videos, I will take a closer look at these locations from North Carolina, Arkansas, Nevada, to a location near you. But right now, I'd like to thank Patty Cakes, Ellen, Myrna Nelson, Just Patty, Storm Peterson, Crystal Wiederholt, and Adrian Pitt. Much love and many thanks. Okay, my friends, stay aware, be prepared, and until next time, keep looking up.